Okay, if I could have everyone's attention, we will get started. Um, Ms. Whitby tells me it's 6 o'clock. So with that, uh, Ms. Whitby, if you call the roll. Yes, sir, Ross. Here. White. Here. Taylor. Robinson. Here. Baxter. Here. Bouch. Here. Height. Here. And Witcher. Here. The quorum is present, sir. Thank you. I invite you to stand as um, Ms. Robinson will lead us in prayer and pledge. Lord, we thank you for this day and another opportunity to take care of the business on behalf of the citizens and residents of North Little Rock. I ask that you be with us tonight and that you would lead and that you would guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So Second. On the motion. On the motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Fouch? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Whitby. How about communications? Anybody want communications pulled? Seeing none, how about a motion? So moved. Second. On the motion. On the motion on communications, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. <laughs> Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Fouch? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've got um, a presentation tonight. Before we do that, I'm going to jump around a little bit as we always. Uh, anyone that is running for a political office in our city. Uh, we welcome them to the podium uh, to in introduce themselves to us and our and our citizens at home. So uh, Kent Walker uh, is running for state rep, and I will ask him to come up and give his three minutes and introduce himself. And welcome, Ken. Thank you for for being a part of the process. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you, Madam Clerk. City Attorney and Alderman present. My name is Kent Walker. I am running for House District 38, which encompasses the 430 interchange north up into the great cities of North Little Rock, all the way to the great city of Sherwood. It goes the Sherwood Golf Course, goes east to 167, and goes west past Camp Robinson. Six of the eight members here, that is part of your ward area. And the only ward that it does not encompass in some form or fashion is Ward 2. I will tell Mrs. Robinson and Mr. Taylor that I lived in Argenta for three and a half years, so Ward 2 is in my heart, even though it's not in my district. All right. I am running. I've been a lifelong resident of North Little Rock. I am a graduate of North Little Rock High School, and I want to come right now before the campaign really gets going and establish relationships with all of you. I've heard from several members that there have been legislators who have represented our city but not been available to you as elected officials to discuss matters, to uh, be involved in a process on a state issues. And I want to assure you that if I'm elected, that will not be the case, that I'll be representing our city, I'll be part of the process, and I want to include you. If we are to have a viable city and viable economic development, we have to include not only the people who are elected in the House, we have to include people who are elected in the city, and we have to include business leaders, and we have to include those in the community. I think many points, and you all have your own examples, I've talked to several of you where that, that process has fallen apart, and I can tell you that's not how I will act, and that is not how I'd be as a state legislator to represent North Little Rock and Sherwood. I want to tell you I'm available right now at any point. You want to contact me. I know several of you are helping out, and I appreciate that. And I, I guess I'll just leave it at that, that um, I, I'm not going to go into any campaign planks. I don't think that's really appropriate, but just let you know that I'm committed to this city. I serve on the chamber board. I serve on the chamber executive committee, helped found the Park Hill Merchant and Business Association that brought us the food truck events. And so just to let you know, this is not something I just decided to, to conjure up just two months or three months ago. I'm committed to this city and making sure that we strive to be a better city and something that people want to be a part of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Kent. Okay. I know everybody cannot wait for John Swanson to come up. <laughs> Uh, John uh, promised me that he would be brief, but uh, what he does for our community is very important, 
and he's going to give us his uh, annual briefing on where we are with MIMS. Thank you, John. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, and uh, citizens of North Little Rock. I will be as quick as I can. There were several things to discuss. But remind folks uh, who we are as MEMS, a public nonprofit agency, actually the city of Little Rock established 31 years ago. Scott Gordon is the chairman. Representatives from North Little Rock include Delois Sykes and Harrison Dean, representing uh, uh, North Little Rock on our board of uh, directors. And to remind folks that we serve uh, Pulaski County, except Jacksonville, Faulkner County, Grant County, and the Cabot area. So about one-sixth of the state's population has uh, MEMS responsibility. And that affords us both the economies of scale and efficiencies to be able to do quite a few things that EMS services might not normally do. In North Little Rock specifically, we maintain four paramedic units here 24-7, but additional units are assigned to the city as the need may arise. We've served as many as nine, I'm sorry, seven <clears throat> 911 calls at the same time by assigning additional ambulances to North Little Rock as the need arises. In addition to that, we maintain a separate fleet of BLS ambulances that provide the non-emergency coverage. And I will touch for a little bit tonight on our STAR or SWAT medics and the LEAFER training that we have provided in support of North Little Rock. Historically, uh, you can see over the last 11 years that the call volume continues to increase. The red line on the top is the transport number, 15,866 requests for 911 service in the city last year. The blue line, 11,684, the number of transports. This is not an unusual relationship between no halls, but the operational responsibility for MEMS is to respond to 15,866 calls. 26% of the time, we do not transport. This shows you the average response time, intense. So we're looking at six minutes and 40 seconds is the average response time for all 15,000 calls. And the response time as a fractile, the 88.5 does not meet our standard. And so we have dedicated additional resources. The last quarter of last year, in January of this year, we have been in excess. We have met the 90%. Uh, we have cured that problem and are well above the 90% standard now. To quickly move on to our STAR team, which stands for Special Tactics Advanced Response. This is an area where we've dedicated a considerable amount of resource, really in preparation, anticipation, both of a traditional SWAT event and the potential for a mass shooting, for example, in a school or a shopping center. The advanced tactical medical team that we have has been in place for a number of years, and these uh, medics deploy every day that your SWAT team is called out for both real world and training events. And we're specifically focusing now on the active shooter protocols. We need to reach patients sooner than has traditionally been the case. And this is an issue all over the United States, that when there's a mass shooting, they typically last only a few minutes, and the police officers are becoming very effective at addressing the threat and immediately attacking that threat. But the issue has been the delay in being able to get to patients who bleed to death from otherwise survivable wounds. And that has been the focus, is how can we provide that? And one way we've done that is with the LEAFER course, law enforcement first responder, where we train police officers how to use tourniquets, chest seal bandages, blood clotting bandages, the individual first aid kits have been provided to the police department officers by the state trauma system, and your police department was the first to fully qualify all the officers, and they have saved lives here in this city by using those tourniquets and the training that they've received. It's been a very successful program, and I certainly applaud the police department for getting ahead of the curve on that. <coughs> so quickly about our medical control, Dr. Chuck Mason is the medical director for both MEMS and the North Little Rock Fire Department. He chairs a medical committee where everything that we do is scrutinized by the ER doctors in charge of the departments here in Central Arkansas. So the very people we deliver patients to evaluate our performance. They direct protocol changes and new equipment and so forth, but it, what's really helpful is the strong partnership with emergency departments. And I'll give you a couple of examples. We're under constant clinical performance review and our medical director attends the national conferences on EMS medical directors from the largest cities in the United States. And from that, a number of protocol changes have come. Just mention a couple. <clears throat> the neonatal resuscitation protocol, working in direct partnership with the baby docs at UAMS, who also work at Children's, is to create a relationship that if there's a preemie or a child born in the community who is uh, sick, a fragile baby, or a pending delivery, 
then a, the protocol with UAMS has made the arrangement that we are actually met at the ER door by the neonatologists, the specialists as required, to immediately intercept and immediately move into the hospital with these kids. These same doctors are coming to our campus and teaching our paramedics additional skill sets when it comes particularly to babies. Another protocol change, suspected massive hemorrhage protocol. The TXA is a blood clotting medicine that uh, is a protocol revision to help us control severe bleeding, again to uh, help people survive what might otherwise be a fatal event. And then the cardiac on scene resuscitation protocol. What that means is that we are now remaining on scene longer for as long as 30 minutes dealing with a patient who is a witness cardiac arrest. What the science tells us from all over the country is that if we emphasize quality uninterrupted CPR on scene, we're going to have a much better chance of, of, of survival for this patient. Because of that partnership with the emergency departments, we use the same drugs, the same electricity, the same protocols as the ERs. So everything we do there is hand in glove. We explain on scene what's going on, but the medics do have the authority to transport sooner if the circumstances dictate. But the goal is to improve resuscitation rates. And the term that we use is the ROSC, the Return of Spontaneous Circulation. And what this slide will tell you is that in 2014, before we did this change, we responded to 597 arrests in the community, the total system, not just North Little Rock. In the 2015, that percentage you'll see on the chart, 15.9%, 15.7%, being able to get return of spontaneous circulation on scene. Since the protocol change late last year, it has doubled which is the expectation, and we intend to and see that number prove, move, improve more toward 40%, which is the best that's achieved in the country. What that means is that in the first quarter, two and a half months, eight lives have been saved using this protocol. We're on pace to triple what it was before. And so we're very pleased with the result and uh, all examples of the kinds of things that we're constantly doing to improve. This year marks the uh, renewal year. We are on a five-year interlocal agreement. And this uh, 2016 is the renewal. Uh, by my records, we've been uh, partners in North Little Rock for 30 years. Uh, we have not requested, we are not requesting a subsidy. The size and economies of scale that, uh, that we have as a combined system allows us to do that without financial support. As I said, we're continuing to advance the quality of care across as many fronts as we can and we're dedicating a significant resource in preparation for that mass casualty, not just the tornado, but that school shooting or whatever uh, circumstance uh, may, pre may present itself. And I'm very uh, proud and pleased with the continuing excellent relationship we have with the police and fire departments here. Questions? Mr. Fouch? Other than the, uh, the SWAT team responders that you have, <clears throat> are you procuring uh, bulletproof vests for additional yes, staff? Yes, you may have seen that news story. That was always our plan, and the reason for it was in order to better equip the medics in the event they have to enter into what's called a warm zone or even a hot zone for shootings. But the tragedy of Jason Adams' uh, death just adds another layer of concern about the safety of our medics. And so, yes, we are in the process of acquiring vests for everyone who goes in the field. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? John, you do a wonderful job. Thank you very much for the service you provide all of our people. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, moving along. Um, public comments uh, regarding pieces of legislation. We have one signed up. Uh, Barbara Armstrong. Barbara, three minutes, please. Thank you. I'm back. Um, we were here at the last council meeting uh, addressing the farmers market. Uh, I am here on behalf of the Argenta farmers. We are asking the council to reconsider, um, to at least place on hold this legislature, this resolution for the Argenta downtown council um, because there were other issues uh, relating to why we were moved to the other location and why we decided to no longer be under the ADC. Um, and the agreement that they have with the city of North Little Rock for this $95,000. We have several um, um, 
areas to where we have been requesting information and it has not been provided to us. And um, we feel like the ADC is working with the Dogtown Farmers Market and that some of this funding that will be coming from this $95,000 will help promote that market. We have been here for nine years. We've been waiting for some sort of funding and promotion for our farmers market, which we have not received. Um, and a lot of our farmers feel like we've been kicked to the curb, slapped in the face, and um, we've really committed ourselves to growing our market. Um, we don't understand really what has happened between the Argenta Farmers Market and the ADC. We do know that there are some personality conflicts, but put that aside, the facts are the facts. Um, in ADC, where they agree to in B, um, to not discriminate, we do have some correspondence where we were told that we could not participate with certain farmers or residents of North Little Rock because of uh, problems that they have had, um, whether they were banned or they considered these people troublemakers. Um, I myself have been targeted at this. Um, section two, um, I'm sorry, uh, C, where they will not mingle city funds. We requested funds that were allocated in 2008 and 2009 to explain some items. Um, we have yet to resolve that from the uh, Argenta Downtown Council. Um, item D, where it acknowledges um, procedural restrictions. We're waiting clarification on that. Um, item E, they um, acknowledge that the expenditures of the government funds uh, for the purpose will not be for public interest under the FOIA request. Um, sorry, I'm under the weather today too. Um, the ADC has not submitted the completed information that we requested under the FOIA request back in November of 2014, 2015. Um, we are receiving communications, but it's basically information that they're saying they do not have it. Um, they have not kept our market funds separate from their account. The monies that we collected at our farmer's market for our stalls, we've asked for reconciliation of those funds as well. We have not received that. Um, and we have uh, uh, seeked a audit and our records indicate that we should have funds of an excess of $10,000 in an account that should be allocated for the farmer's market. We have been told that we have zero funds available, but yet they have not kept up with our records. We have, and we have to this date still have not resolved um, these um, funds from back in 2012. Um, also in item F, the ADC has not kept accurate records, um, more specific, the, uh, um, the quarterly and financial uh, performances performances of the market um, kept in separate. Um, the tax returns that we have requested on the 990 forms are incomplete. Um, we still have questions um, uh, regarding the funds that were allocated for the farmer's market. Um, and in item I, the ADC, budget does not specify the use of the funds for promotion and marketing. It mentions of a farmer's market, 